Hi, I'm Charlie Flannery, your host, and welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate. My guest today is Mr. Ed Correa, a local businessman. Ed, thank you for coming back on. My pleasure. Good to see you again, Charlie. I'll tell you, the response was so overwhelming. I received so many uh, phone calls uh, talking about how wonderful you were. It did sound like John McCall trying to disguise his voice. Probably was. But yeah. I could not say <coughs> with any certainty. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the other reasons I wanted to have you back on, last time we had talked about you know, your strategies as a real estate investor, but what a lot of people don't know is that you and your family have not only been successful in, several, in one business, real estate, but you've also made a heavy investment in, in the city of Taunton in, in several other businesses. I don't know how many people you might employ or, or are employed as a result of that, but, but you guys represent to me something of what's good. It's people who believe in, in the city of Taunton and its future and, and put their money where their mouth is. So I want to congratulate you and uh, please spread my good wishes to your, well, your family. Well, thank you very much. I love yeah. this city. Always have. Yeah. Moved away a couple of different times. Always ended up back here because it's, it's a great place to live. It's a great place to raise a family. So um, we're, we're here. We're embedded in the, play, in the city and uh, um, we contribute a lot to the city. Um, I feel that if you live in an environment then you should, and you're making your living from that environment, you should, you should reinvest in the environment. I'm strong, I always felt that way. Always felt that way. So uh, I'm here to stay. Except these cold winters are getting a little tough, though. <laughs> the, old, the old arthritis doesn't do as well as it used to, you know? But uh, one of the things that we had figured we might kick out mm -hmm. is what was some of the biggest news stories for the city of Taunton in this year of 2010. And just we picked some at random and we're gonna discuss them at random, but one of them will be crime. Is it on the upswing or is it just a more proactive police force we have with a new regime? Okay, so we got crime there. We've got uh, political sea changes. Jimmy Fagan not being reelected and Mayor Crowley not seeking reelection. Things are going to be uh, interesting in the next couple of years. Well, I think Jimmy's yet to be seen, though, right? Isn't there a, a recount going it's still, on? It's still, it's still going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's still going on. That's a that was a close race. Oh, that was God. a shocker. Mm -hmm. That was a shocker. And then, uh, you know, we figured no, no discussion of 2010 could be complete with at least touching on the Star Theater. So we'll talk about that. <clears throat> and uh, many of us are thrilled with the concept of a new skateboard park going in behind uh, City Hall. Uh, I hope Santa's looking because I don't have a skateboard. <clears throat> then also of, of major topic this past year has been the landfill and what we're going to do about it. Hmm. And in line with the concept of you and your family being believers in the city of Taunton and its future and investing, you know, there was the, the Hallsmith Cisco choosing Middleborough over Taunton. Big loss for the city. I don't know what happened there, but uh, to me that was newsworthy, especially when we need every job we can get. So those are some of the things that that, that we had uh, figured we'd talk about. Uh, how about we start off with number one, crime. Crime. First of all, I, whoever does your props, uh, they do a fantastic job. I have to say that. <laughs> the budget is unbelievable. <laughs> and you didn't mention Santa. Oh, uh, Santa. We went all out. <laughs> $2.50 I paid for him at the place next door. Did you? That was the rest of the, the production budget for the year. Yeah. That's why you should shop downtown Taunton. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. I probably would have had, I probably would have paid at least three bucks for that had I gone to Rainham. Yes, you would have. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, crime. So crime. Crime. 
Um, does it pay? It doesn't pay. No, it doesn't pay. Okay. It may for a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually it doesn't. <laughs> uh, kind of miss my old friend, uh, Captain Richie Pimenta. I'm sure you remember him, sure. Captain Good, yeah. uh, with his show on television. Yeah. yeah. Um, at that time, uh, I used to know all the uh, all of the um, um, people who were involved in crime in the city because they always showed up on the show. Um, so now, you, but you do have Steve uh, Crownshield and Mike Bonafont with their show. Good so, guys. Uh, that helps. I mean, I tend to see a few people that uh, come in and apply for apartments now and then uh, on the show, and uh, that sets off a little bell, uh, you know, to uh, be careful. Um, but as far as crime being on the rise in the city, um, I don't, I mean, I know that when we have a bad economy, um, usually crime is up. Uh, a lot of more break-ins, for instance, because people need money. Um, and a lot of it has to do with drugs, too. Um, but I personally have not seen a, a huge increase. And I think that that may have a lot to do with the new, uh, um, the new police chief and how he's running things over there. Um, I'm impressed with this gentleman. Yeah, yeah I, think he's, uh, I think he's done a great job so far. I think he's tried to make the police force, with, with their limited resources, much more proactive. And that may be, in large part, why we're seeing, you know, the increase in, like, the drug arrests. But, but it's the surge in violent crime that concerns me. There have mm -hmm. been several uh, armed robberies recently of gas stations and convenience stores. And the other thing that, that kind of surprises me is, like, I see an increase. Yeah, I, one of the first things you read when you read the local paper, the police log, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. and. I'm surprised at the amount of women, young women, who are involved in violent crimes. Violent crimes. You know? I usually go first to the obituaries to see if my name's in there. Oh, of course. And then I go to the, yeah. to the crime. I misspoke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, you know... Um, if I'm not dead and I haven't been arrested, I got a uh, shot at gotta, having a good day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> then it's on to the sports. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, I go to a networking meeting, and uh, you get to speak a little bit about your business, our businesses. And uh, I've been opening up lately at a few of those network meetings by saying, I, you know, such and such a business uh, located in beautiful, um, gorgeous downtown Taunton, where there hasn't been a stabbing, a shooting, or a murder at least a week. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always good for a chuckle, but it's not that bad here. But you're, you are absolutely right, though. There are a lot more... Um, uh, seem to be a lot more armed robberies, and there seem to be more women involved in it. And usually, the case is drugs, right? Drugs or or, or alcohol or alcohol. You know, they're either yeah. they're either they're, they're not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. You know. So should they legalize marijuana so that everyone can um, get high legally? Uh, well, that could be a topic for another show. I okay, mean, it, I, I don't that. know how tangentially. <laughs> I don't know how we can tie that in tangentially to real estate, but uh, well, crime. But, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe if they did, you know, I, they spend so much money. They they spend so much money uh, trying to trying to crack down on it. Maybe if the government sold it and, and taxed it. it and made some revenue for it, it's like prohibition. You know, that's why Al Capone became rich. Mm -hmm. You know. Him and Joe Kennedy. There you go. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. yeah. Something going on. But I think so. uh, I think it's a combination of all of those things. It, it is on the rise. Society as a whole is becoming more violent, and 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 it's good enforcement. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, no matter how good the enforcement gets, the bad guys just keep coming. Okay. It seems you know they've got too much time on their hands. And that's one you know? of the things that's, that 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 bugs me about the, the skateboard park you know, going in back at City Hall. You know, when you start talking about using your limited resources, uh, and I'm talking about as prime locations go, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see that skateboard park along the river uh, as being something that would induce you to bring your wife or me to bring a, a girlfriend mm -hmm. down for dinner someplace downtown. That just, I, I just don't see that, you know, so. I think what they want, there are, I don't think there are many as many skaters now as they were, say, five, ten years ago. I really don't see them, um, but I think the people who do um, skate feel that that's going to be a location where they know that the kids will be at, um, and it's going to be a, a location that's protected. Don't know a lot about it, so I mean, I'm shooting some comments. I did talk to one lady who was behind um, behind that park um, probably a year ago or so, and she was talking to me about why they were doing it. Um, 
don't remember a lot about it, but I do know that that was what their intention was, to give them a place localized in a safe area where they can skate, rather than going up and down Broadway and Main Street, jumping people's uh, you know, steps and, and porches and stuff like that. Well, I, um, feel that I feel I can come out in opposition to it because uh, I had some scientific research done and less than one half of 1% of my demographic are skateboarders. Are skateboarders, yeah. So I'm not gonna lose a large viewership yeah. By, by, by my opposition. Right. Yeah, I mean, I feel that it's a good location down there for something, not just for skateboarding. I mean, I, I would think that they could do something else to attract other people, too, to come down there. I don't know how much, how much area they're going to take with it. It's going to run from somewhere over near Spring Street, behind the police station, all along the river. The river? And over by, I, I think, over by Mill River, you know, by the old mm -hmm. Taunton Mall on Washington. I believe. Is that for skaters or is that the river walk? Well, it's the river walk and I don't know if that's the whole thing is going to yeah. be or if it's going to be the drug walk or, you know, I mean, yeah. I, just well, can't, walk I, I just can't yeah. see, you know, you or me wanted to take a stroll, <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. 1230 a.m. With, with, with a beautiful lady and yeah. watch the river and, you know. <laughs> it hasn't worked very well over by the mall. No, it has uh, so not. No, I don't no. know how this is going to help it unless yeah. they're going to have some supervision there during the nighttime hours. And who knows? I mean, you, you take, for instance, up in Providence, they've done a fabulous job, yeah. you know, revitalizing the city yeah. and yeah. also with the river fires and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. I mean, if that's the idea, you've got to promote getting some, some businesses down there yeah. along that yeah. walk. You know? And I don't think that's been done. I, no. I think they've got the, the walk without the money, you know. Yeah. And, Maybe I, I don't know. It's, it yeah. just doesn't seem like a, a great idea at this time. And, and I, we'd all like to see downtown revitalized. I, mm -hmm. I happen to have the privilege of watching uh, Ch Charlie Crowley's Old Time Taunton last oh, night. Really? I didn't see it last night. And, and uh, he did the history of the, the Christmas displays on Taunton Green. And they started in 1914. And it was terrific, you know. And as, as they got into some of the... Uh, the later photos that were mm -hmm. taken during the, mm, I could remember them <laughs> from a child as a child, you know, yep. and it really brought back a lot of memories, you know, yep. and uh, it was it was a good thing to watch. So that's something I think that 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 produces a lot of capital, mm -hmm. emotional capital for the city. I agree. You know, if I we agree. could follow that, and now we've got you know a Mexican restaurant, they're invested in downtown. We've Doing very well from what a couple of other restaurants that have invested downtown, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and and it's good to see people making a stake. And and yet, one of the things that really reminded me of was uh, you know when I was a young boy, and gee, it was like every Sunday or Saturday, I'd come downtown with my father and. And there'd be Dunningtons and Liggetts, mm, Liggetts. and, and yep. that would be the place you'd go where all the political conversation yep. or the news of the day would be talked about. The lunch counter there. Yeah, yep. and there were you know Pobers and all these other stores downtown on Main Street. And Do you remember Christmas in the city? Oh yeah. I mean the streets were full. Oh, they my were God. packed. Yeah. yeah. The stores were packed. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And J C Penney used to be downtown. They did. Yeah, they used to be downtown, and they used to have the shoots with the money. Where were they located? Right where um, Goodnow's was. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That was years and years ago because my aunt used to work there. Well, you're much older than I am, too. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just look it. <laughs> Had a rougher life. Now, one thing you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Charlie's name, Charlie Crowley. And I think, to be honest with you, that's one of the biggest shocks of this year when he announced that he wasn't running. Yeah. I'm st I, 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 I'm in shock. I'm flabbergasted. can't believe that he's not going to run. Yeah. I know that Charlie loves this city. Yeah. And personally, I think he has done a phenomenal job. Um, and I, I, I mean, I haven't chatted with him, so I don't know his reasons. I know there's a lot of controversy over in, the, in City Hall, but it's sad that a gentleman uh, of his character and, and someone ha has done as well a job as he has, has decided out of the blue to not run again. Yeah, well, you know, and maybe it's um, maybe it's the limited resources. You know, money money getting kicked back down from the state or from the feds. I mean, when there's a lot of money, it's fun to be mayor. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can 
be, be behind this school and that street improvement mm -hmm. and putting sewerage down here and everybody loves you. But when you've got to make the tough decisions, you know, it's, it's a whole different ballgame. And I can see where it could stop being fun, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But uh, we're up against a hard break right now. We're going to take uh, a couple of minutes for a couple of public service announcements. Please do stay tuned for more of Let's Talk Real Estate. Some things require experts at every stage. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Others are more just a matter of taste and preference. Just the way I like them. Buying a home falls somewhere in between. That's why you should visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com for expert guidance a website where you can learn just how you should go about buying a home. You'll get facts, tools, and impartial advice. From seeing a lender to settlement and beyond, there's a step-by-step -step explanation of the process. All at HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. Houston, we have a solution. Think of it as mission control for buying a home. That's HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. This is a message from HUD, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Can you afford your home loan? Could your mortgage payment increase in a few months to something you can't afford? Hi, I'm Ruby D. If you're not sure you can continue to make your mortgage payments, call a government-approved housing counselor in your community for free and confidential help. Keep your home. Know your loan. Call today. Call 877-HUD-1515. That's 877-HUD-1515 or go to HUD.gov. Hi, welcome back to Let's Talk Real Estate. I'm your host, Charlie Flannery, and my guest today is still Mr. Ed Career. Ed, thanks for not bolting on me during the break. You know? <laughs> I tried, but they locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <you're kind> of <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we were, we were moving and grooving pretty mm -hmm. well there for the first half. Uh, mm -hmm. I think no discussion of important stories for the city of Taunton for the year 2010 will, would be complete without some mention of the Star Theater. Yeah. Yikes. I have a solution. Yes. To two of your cards. Okay. Move the landfill to the Star Theater. End of story. Okay, hold on. I'm just saying, take the this landfill. This is the landfill. Move We're moving the landfill to, to the, the Star Theater. Theater. Okay. Two birds with one stone. <laughs> Go ahead. We can chat about But the I think Star before Theater. we do that, whatever lawyer draws up that contract, <laughs> let's make sure that that's a contingency. Yes, I got you. You know, I get you. how could yeah. we buy a, a, all this land? We pay 10 times for what we used to own it for. Mm -hmm. All right? 10? And, or, or more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, up on Fremont Street, and now we find out we want to build something like, like, like out of the Jetsons, and, and we can't do it, and, and, uh, and we might not be able to get the permits. Yeah, that's now, the issue, the permits. You know, you've, you've invested in a lot of businesses. If you were buying a piece of land because you wanted to build a car wash there, wouldn't you have your attorney make sure that everything in that contract to purchase says, Got to have all my permits for a car wash. Subject to. Before mm -hmm. cash changes hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, otherwise you're buying a piece of land with some dirt and trees. You, you know? draw up a P&S and you pass, on, pass, you put a deposit down, you pass papers when you get your permits, like you said. Yeah. <coughs> we didn't, I, I don't we didn't do that, apparently. No. I don't know all the details about that. Um, he, th th that was paid for already, that land was paid for. We've owned it for a few years, haven't we? The well, we had, we had owned it for <coughs> yeah. before mm -hmm. because the TMLP owned it. Mm -hmm. and, and then at one point sold it to some fellow out of Norton for a mm -hmm. pittance. And mm -hmm. then we did, several years later, we bought it back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, but were the intentions when we sold it? I mean, did we know that we were going to utilize it for trash to energy? Well, I don't know that, um, I don't know that the prospect of use, using that as an alternative Mm -hmm. to the landfill. I don't know if that was specifically discussed, mm -hmm. but when the TMLP owned it at that time, they certainly were aware that the city was looking for a place. A place for a landfill, yeah. So I don't know. The yeah. left hand doesn't talk to the right hand. I don't know, but all I know mm -hmm. is that the city, the taxpayers of the city of Taunton are the ones, uh, 
you know, mm -hmm. pay, paying all this money for God knows what, you know. And yeah. I mean, if 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 the money tree was blooming, it's it'd not. be different. But mm -hmm. if, you know, here we are in tough times, yeah. and we're thinking about we can't afford to hire ten more cops that we could mm -hmm. use, or ten more firefighters, or five more teachers, or whatever it is. But mm -hmm. in fact, we're lay, trying to lay, avoid laying off five or ten. Mm -hmm. And uh, that money would have gone a long way. Yes. You know? H having not done a lot of research on the landfill and alternative uh, uh, measures to that, um, I know that a lot of people ha are in opposition to the new trash to energy plant. Um, and once again, I don't know a lot about it, but I haven't seen them come up with any alternatives to that. Um, have you? Do you? Well, I guess there are no immediate long term solutions to the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, right now we're, we, the city seems to be pursuing some cutting edge technology mm -hmm. toward some gasification or something out of the Jetsons. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. that is beyond mm -hmm. my ability to comprehend. But there, there are, I guess, short term solutions. Maybe we could have um, made arrangements to, to, cut, to cut the stuff out down to Rochester. Mm -hmm. for a period of five years while we study the problem a little bit further, you know, and the technology evolves. You know, I, I was telling you earlier, I bought a computer about a month ago and uh, I replaced a machine I had that was like seven and a half years old and I had paid seven and a half years ago about eleven or twelve hundred dollars and for four hundred and fifty dollars I got, I got something that's six times as powerful, six times the memory and takes up a half the space. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you're in, in, investing in cutting-edge technology, sometimes it's it's good not to be the first one in. Yes. Let somebody yeah. else spend their money on learning mm -hmm. where we could make progress in the technology and let the technology sometimes catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, in the meantime, you know, I mean, and they've, they've discussed uh, if we don't build it, having to increase the charge of those trash bags from a dollar to up to, I've heard, up to five dollars. Wow. I mean, now one of the first things you could do is, it's got to cost a, a few pennies to make a trash bag. Why don't they just insist, okay, you buy your own trash bags and we'll sell you a big smiley sticker for a dollar or two dollars. I mean, that's got to cost at least half of what it would cost to make a whole bag. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, little things, you know, sometimes, those bags are horrible too. Oh yeah. my God, they fall apart. They do, uh, they do. Especially we, when we, you put them out three days early, like you do, so the rats and it. the cats can yeah. get at them. You know well, what I mean? You know, I do that because I miss the old landfill. I yeah. don't know if when you were a kid, you went down there with your 410 or your 12 gauge shotgun. 22 at rats. night shooting rats. Oh man, there were thousands oh. of rats. I used. To, yeah. I mean, I think my record was yeah. six rats with one shot with wow. a 410 spread shot. So wow. I miss those days. Yeah. You know. Of course, yeah. the neighbors didn't like the rats in their backyard, but... The kids today, <laughs> kids today, they don't know, you yeah. know what I mean? That would be a great skateboard park, though, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> or well, the, the hills, there yeah. you go. You know, <laughs> now, now this, let's move, let's move skateboard into, we'll move that out of uh, the Landfill Star Theater, and we'll put skateboard <laughs> with the landfill. We've got to be careful now. We, we the had, during the break, we, uh, someone had spoke up about oh, yes. the skateboard park yes. and, and uh, how many kids are still involved in, in skateboarding. So there, right. I guess there is a lot of interest still with skateboarding, and it does, uh, does keep the kids in a, in a good location. And this will save money. It might hurt the business that is, <laughs> yeah. is currently doing skateboarding. Skateboarding What's, is a gateway to drugs. Let's be, <laughs> let's, skateboarding is a gateway to drugs. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, firm scientific data. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my entire technical staff has just walked out. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's what happened okay. with you when you were, you used to be roller skating up at Highland Heights, right? Did that lead you to drugs or? No, it was the fall. It was the, oh, oh. When it you was the head that. injury. <laughs> After that, it's never been quite. You got the hooked same. on aspirin back then, yeah. right? <laughs> you know. I, now I take four a day. Yeah. You know? And then, how, how about uh, this? Has got to be of interest. The city hall fire. I mean, you know, what? A, how can you point fingers? 
Oh, <laughs> you know. Well, you, you can't point fingers, but I'm just saying it's like here we are. It's tough economic times, and this just occurs as like at the same time, and it's like kicking yeah. society when we're down. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? When when we don't, just when we were hoping we wouldn't have to spend an extra five or ten million, mm -hmm. along comes the fire. Well, it, it's insured. I'm, I'm just wondering if they have insurance for upgrades. That's the big issue with, with, with uh, City Hall. I yeah. think of the up, up, code, code enforcement upgrades. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, uh, I mean, I've talked to a few people that said that we got Kohanet School over there that's, you know, handicap accessible. It's, <clears throat> it's pretty much all set up. We could move City Hall over there. Um, and then maybe just use City Hall for certain functions. I mean, like the, the, the council meetings and stuff like that. There's plenty of room at, at Kohanet School. I don't know why that's not a consideration, or maybe it is. Do you know anything? Have you heard any scuttlebutt about that? It's too close to the why, and they figured that the politicians may have too corrupting of an influence on the youth going to the why. <laughs> so it's for the children. <laughs> That they're not okay. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Which, trying to insulate the children from all the bad influences, such as politicians, skateboarding, <laughs> landfills. Uh, <laughs> we must save the children. Okay. Know? Yes. I got you. That, save that's going to be the uh, slogan the for 2011. Yeah. And that, 20 lappy about the courthouse, because, you know, right now when I'm a victim of tenant, they have to go to Fall River, and, and most of them don't show up. But now they're going to show up because they just walk down the street. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, mixed blessings. Well, you know, yes. I think this is, it's been a terrific show, very successful because we've probably managed to turn off just about everybody. I think, I, I think we've said something that we hope you found offensive, at least, at, you know, just a little piece, you know, because uh, 2010, it, it's, it's uh, just about wrapped up. And uh, I say, I for one say good riddance and uh, happy new year to 2011. Listen, I want to thank you all for tuning in today. If you'd like to get a free episode of today's show, please send in your name, your address, and your telephone number so we can verify to Let's Talk Real Estate at Verizon.net, and we'll get you out a free copy of today's show. That's for the first 100 callers, because we can't do this forever. And if you'd like to have any questions answered or, or tell us how you think we stink, uh, you can call 508-884-8869. No skateboarders, please. Thanks for tuning in to Let's Talk Real Estate. See you next time.